presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are LA. Beautiful night for baseball here in the Southland. It's the final weekend of the 2016 campaign. It's been a tough season for the Angels, but they're looking to finish things on a high note as the Houston Astros are in town for the last three of the year. We welcome you inside the uh, Big A and back to Angels baseball here on Fox Sports West. He's Mark Gubiza. I'm Victor Rojas. And uh, of course, prior to the off day yesterday, the Oakland A's were in town. The Angels were able to sweep the series against the Athletics, and the bats certainly came to life, especially on Tuesday and Wednesday. That fourth inning, something special, total of 15 runs scored. Yeah, Victor, multiple run innings, and it's certainly worthy of our Honda helpful moment, what they've been able to do of late. Some really good swings for this club, especially you mentioned in the fourth inning. Big grand slam, first of his career for Jeffrey Marte. Cole Calhoun, an outstanding fourth inning himself. He had a double and a triple in the same inning. First inning to do that since Jim Edmond did back in 1994. And then on Wednesday, did a little bit better. Shane Robinson, one of the many hitters in that lineup, scored eight runs in that inning. After seven the night before, eight. Cole Calhoun capped it off with a big fly, two-run home run himself. So the Angels have been playing much, much better baseball of late. They've been scoring runs. 7-1 in the last eight games, averaging nearly six runs per game. The pitching has been good, and no team in MLB history, well, since at least 1912, has had three straight games of seven run or more innings. So maybe again tonight, the Angels could put together one of those magical innings, whether it's the first, fourth, or even the eighth inning, having seven runs or more. Mike Trout on uh, Wednesday was hit by a pitch taken out of the game. He's back in the lineup, DHing Albert Pujols once again, not in the lineup, more than likely done for the rest of the season. We're just about ready for baseball here, here at the Big A. Sit back, relax, gonna bring you the lineups and the first pitch when we return.
series of the regular season. Angels and the Astros wrapping things up here. The Angels with an opportunity to uh, avoid a 90 loss season. And uh, all things considered, with all the uh, injuries and the amount of players that uh, rifled through that dugout this year for Mike Sosha and the Halos, it, uh, at least it's a, 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 a nice milestone, I guess, uh, of not reaching. Is that, is that a way to put yeah, it? Because at one point so. there was a, a possibility that the Angels could lose. Maybe 100 games. You just didn't know how things were playing out uh, midsummer. But to, to get to the point where you avoid 90 losses sounds a lot better. Than yeah. 90 losses. And then you, you swept Oakland, so you avoid the possibility of ending up in last place right. in the division, which Mike Socia is so accustomed not to have done to him, end up being in last place with a team he manages. Well, the lineup cards have been exchanged. And uh, we'll get to the lineups here second. As soon as the Angels uh, take the field, Daniel Wright's on the mound for the Angels. Brad Peacock is going for the Houston Astros. The Angels today announcing that they've reached the 3 million fan mark once again for the 14th consecutive season. And that's a testament to the uh, the great fan base that the Angels have that continue to come out and support uh, this ball club. And uh, hopefully a lot of folks come out on Sunday for Fan Appreciation Day so that uh, they at least get a chance to be recognized because it, it's been a nice one heck of a run. You yes. talk about 14 seasons. It's uh, not an easy accomplishment. Halos have taken the field. We'll check out A.J. Hinch's lineup for the Houston Astros. They are currently at 83 and 76. And that uh, rough weekend that Houston had last weekend against the Angels, dropping three of four, certainly put a damper on their postseason hopes. They were eliminated officially yesterday. And uh, George Springer will lead things off tonight. He will serve as the D.H. Marwin Gonzalez is in left. Jose Altuve at second base. Carlos Correa, the shortstop. Yuli Gurriel at uh, third base. A.J. Reed. It's the start at first base. Tails got Hernandez is the right fielder. Castro behind the plate. Marisnik, the uh, Southern California product, is out in center field, and he will bat ninth. Mentioned Daniel Wright's on the mound. This will be his fifth start since coming over to the Angels, and uh, it's been uh, a tough go for him. 0-3 with a 6.53 ERA, and again, as we touched on the last start that he had, Gooby, the fact that uh, really the out pitch or lack thereof has been. The one thing that is has hurt him quite a bit. And it goes along with my go-tos as far as what we got to see from right here today. Better early strikes for one. And then when he misses, miss low. Where do he happens a lot of times when he's been ahead of the count, he's missed upstairs. Miss low. That means break a ball, fastball, lower part of the strike zone, even below the strike zone to get those swing and misses, get those quick outs. But again, early on, especially against this aggressive Astro lineup, you don't want to miss over the plate. Let's check out the defense for the Angels tonight uh, behind. Daniel Wright, G-Man Joy's in left, Rafael Ortega in center, Cole Calhoun at right. The infield with Jeffrey Marte and Angelton Simmons on the left side, Caleb Coward and C.J. Crone on the right, and Jet Bandy tonight behind the play. And C.J. Crone over at first base, we're seeing some improvement from him, especially when it comes to that 3-6-3 three, three double play, some better range, just look from the get, even more so as far as improvement going on in his pop-ups. Just committed two hours in his last 71 games, 997 fielding percent in his last 71 games. For CJ Crone. I don't know, that music kind of gets you pumped up. Oh, yeah. Also makes you want to say Jive Turkey <laughs> for some reason. So, one. You talking oh, to me? Yeah, yeah. George Springer, the DH tonight. And it's two balls and no strikes. Springer hitting 262. 29 home runs, 82 runs batted in. Also at 29 doubles, five triples. Everyday right fielder for Houston, but actually the quasi day off at DH, especially now that the season. As far as uh, postseason is concerned, come to an end for Houston. With all those expectations, too, yeah. coming into the season. A lot of experts were pick, picking them to represent the American League in the fall classic. Check swing, and Andy wants an appeal. He did not go. Dan Isonia tonight calling the balls and strikes. Lance Barrett at first base, walking Bob Davidson over at second, and Dale Scott, the crew chief, at third. There's AJ, second season at the helm. This one lifted out towards shallow left. G bands underneath it. Waiting for the rainmaker to come down, and there's the first out of the game. One thing you could say about the Houston Astros is that they do have a lot of talent, uh, a lot of young talent, whether it's controllable at the major league level or also at the farm system. They've got some big arms. They obviously went through some injuries. Keiko kind of uh, getting hurt towards the end. McCullers as well. Certainly hurt them, put the onus a little bit more so on the bullpen. But they've got, uh, because of the struggles that they did have, they had some pretty good drafts. Yes. So there are some 
pretty good players in their minor league system currently already in the big leagues but also down. Yeah for the most part at pitch well they play excellent defense so they're always in seem to be every single game which is trying to stay healthy like every other major league club they've had some key injuries to some stars especially mentioned in the staff. McCullers going down for quite a while now and Keuchel the same thing really hurt them down the stretch. Marvin Gonzalez with an 0 1 count. We saw him in uh, three of the four games at first base in that series in Houston getting a start tonight and left. Uh, foul this one off. No balls two strikes Marwin switch hitter hitting 254 with 13 home runs and 51 runs batted in. See this is that moment right now for Daniel Wright head of the count 0 2. It's where you can afford to miss in the dirt or even if you're going at a fastball it has to be above the letters. You don't want to miss in the strike zone now when you fought to get ahead. And popped him up. Jabbed him. Simmons will uh, make the catch on the dirt. Two down. You know, just to back up your point, the struggles that uh, Wright has had, especially finishing off guys. You talk about on base percentage over the last month for him with two strike counts. It's a 400 on base percentage. That's, that's not good. No, I mean, he, and there's there are times when we've seen when him pitching, starting for the Angels, he looks pretty solid. But when he's gotten that opportunity to finish off hitters, he has not done so on a consistent basis. But there has been some bright spots with him. Now to be able to see him get an opportunity to pick up that this first win tonight. Jose Altuve. 337. 24 home runs, 96 RBIs, and he'll lift one out to right. Again, pretty good job running that pitch in on the hands just enough as Calhoun will put it away in an easy one, two, three inning for right. We'll head to the bottom of the first with no score. Check out Mike Sosha's lineup for the Angels as uh, Cole Calhoun will lead things off and play right field. Trout DHing once again, third consecutive game for him in that spot. CJ Crohn at first, Jeffrey Marte in third base, Sanderson Simmons at shortstop, Jeff Bandy behind the plate, and Rafi Ortega in center field, Caleb Coward to start in second base tonight. And then you've got G Man Choi batting ninth, and he is patrolling left field. They are taking on the 28 year old right hander, native of Wellington, Florida. That's in Palm Beach County. His name is Brad Peacock, who had a very good start against the Angels in Houston, although he was taken out after five innings. Yeah, he threw the ball exceptionally well. 27 innings, 23 strikeouts so far this season for Peacock. Tenth game, fifth start. And uh, this one's fouled off. And my go-to is to be successful against him. This game is center cut. Look for those mistakes, middle part of the plate. He will make some mistakes, and don't chase the off speed we saw that down there in Houston some hitters chased some off speed pitches down and away against them. Also a guy that works very very quickly as you see Cole kind of taking a little extra time before settling into the batter's box off speed first strike and it's 0 and 2. 
Cole hitting 272, has 18 home runs, driven home 73. And Escobar out of the lineup, he's been the guy that's uh, primarily hitting that leadoff spot. Two for four game on Wednesday, including a home run. And he'll go down swinging on the breaking ball for the first out. Yeah, that's that breaking ball talk about chasing out of the strike zone. That's how the Astros stack up on the defensive side of things. Gonzalez, Borisnik, and Hernandez in the outfield from left to right. It's Guriel, Correa, Altuve, and Reed from third to first. Castro behind the plate. And so often we talk about Altuve, how good he is offensively, but very, very good defensively. Also second amongst AL second baseman in fielding percentage at 988. He's only committed seven errors. Has turned 73 double plays. Won the gold glove last year. Winnie Robinson Cano with a better fielding percentage this season. Trout hitting 318, 29 home runs, 99 runs batted in. Leads the world in on base percentage at 441, second in OPS. League average, by the way, on base percentage, 326. He's at 441. Down and away. Two on count. As usual, a number of Trout fans wearing the jersey here in this ballpark and every ballpark we've been through this entire season. A little bit low. 3 1 count. Peacock had to start on Saturday night in Houston. This one's fouled back. Good count. And five innings gave up a run on one hit, seven strikeouts, two walks. His first hit didn't occur until the fourth inning. He had a hiccup of a fourth inning with a couple of walks, but then had a one, two, three, fifth, and that was it for him. What, 79 pitches? Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. 3 2. There's a walk to start the uh, first plate appearance for Mike Trout. A Hyundai key for the game tonight. That's what we were chain smokers. Don't let me down. We talked about how well this offense has bunched hits together of late, especially multi run innings. But for each hitter to be able to pick each other up as Trout picks up another walk. And on base percentage increases once again. And Mike Trout now the all time leader as far as walks in one season in Angels history past Lake Ray Tony Phillips. T.J. Chrome, 280 average with 16 home runs and 69 runs batted in. One for five game the other night, double. And this is off the end of the bat, broke it, lifted down the line, and it'll go foul. Well, that started drifting back towards the line. Was it wasn't that far away. <laughs> Marlon Gonzalez just stopped running after it. I mean, it wasn't hit. It wasn't a sky-high fly ball. But like you said, down the lines here, the ball kind of at times tends to drift back. Peacock is not allowed a stolen base against him this season. Pretty quick to the plate. This was queued up the first baseline foul. As you think of Trout trying to pick up a stolen base, one home run away from 30 home runs, three stolen bases away from 30 stolen bases. These are the counts, too. You can anticipate a break a ball in the dirt. You have an opportunity to go if you're Trout. And Crow strikes out swinging. Peacock came right after with a fastball. Two down, second strikeout of the inning for the right hander. And it almost looked like CJ Crone was looking off speed by that swing right there on the fastball. A little bit tardy on that was right down the heart of the plate at 93. So looking at this angle to see if Trout get has much of a lead so far. Not quite yet. Trout on the move, picked the perfect pitch, the tag, and he is in there safely. 
Now he was going, he was trying to get momentum going as Castro was in the, unable to throw him out. See him starting to move, and then he goes. The slide in there, that base was blocked quite a bit by Altuve, and, and Trout, as usual, figures out a way to get to that base, reaches around the back part of the base to get in there successfully to 28 stolen base of the season for Trout. Might see him go right away. He's off and running. Throw down by Castro. Good one save for third base. Guriel with a quick tag. I don't know if he got the tag in because the throw got there. Yeah, it was a really good throw. Guriel was on the move trying to catch a tag at the same time. See right here. Yeah, he yeah. didn't look like he got the tag on him. Baseball was there. Him. That's a real good throw. Yeah. And he missed him. That's a straight whiff. So back-to-back -back stolen bases for Trout. Now one stolen base away from 30. He's like Invisible Man trying to slide in there. <laughs> Both plays. You have Altuve blocking the base. He's able to get his hand in the back part. Here, a perfect throw from Castro and missed the tag. And it's also, like I said, the movement by Guriel, that, that momentum is still carrying him yep. toward the home plate area as opposed to just planting yourself at the bag. And you know a few years ago before replay, Umpires are mm -hmm. calling him out. Right, because the because ball beats you. Beat you there. Yep. Three zero count on Marte. Trout standing at third. Jeffrey at two fifty five average at that grand slam for his thirteenth home run of the year. That was on Tuesday night. That's a, that's a pretty nasty breaking ball right there. Slider. He throws a cut fastball. His fastball, 88 to 93 range, a slider slash cut fastball, curveball, changeup. And uh, that is outside. Oh, they had changed the count, apparently. Well, the full count now on Marte. And yeah, the second fun attempt slash just to distract Castro behind the plate was called a strike or maybe even on the bun attempt. Three, two, and that's down the line, slicing out of play. So Trout now, this one home run and one stolen base from 30 30 season. The go along with 100 walks, 100 RBI, or get, getting close to 100 RBI, and on a run scored. So one RBI, one home run, one stolen base away for Trout. And yes, now has the all-time record for walks in a single season as an angel. Payoff again, breaking ball. This one's bounced to third. Guriel has it. Saw his strong arm in Houston last weekend, and the Angels leave a man at third. We will head to the second with no score.
One, two, three inning for uh, Daniel Wright. The three fly ball outs. They'll face Correa, Gurriel, and Reed. Here in the Astros half of the second. Total 10 pitches for Daniel. Like you said, it was a very nice inning for him, nice and clean. A good off speed pitch on Correa. No one count on the shortstop who comes in batting 276, has 20 home runs, and driven home 96. American League Rookie of the Year last season. No balls, two strikes. Having another solid season. 96 RBI season for Correa. And he made some unbelievable defensive plays down there at Minute Maid Park. Put on a show. Just watching him and Simmons play that defense at shortstop in that series down in Houston was unbelievable. Last time out for right, or for it was a, a little bit of a battle for him. Mentioned his struggles. Now it's upstairs. So he gone from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. The start was at Houston. Gave him three runs on seven hits. Worked six innings. 90 pitches for him. This one's ripped out to right field. And again, a lot of times he's got hurt, Gooby. It's because with two strikes, he's. He seems to go to the fastball yep. and elevate the fastball consistently. When you have the spin rate that he has on his curveball, which is a very good one, that's the pitch I'm going to when I'm ahead of the count, whether it's 0-2 or 1-2, fastball away. That's a good piece of hitting by Correa. You could see his approach. He was trying to drive the ball the other way, but it was a high fastball. You can do that. Low fastball, more difficult. Leadoff man on board. Here's Yuli Gurriel, third baseman. Takes a breaking ball downstairs. 32-year-old native of Cuba, hitting 258. I think he's got another another double play in him. Remember what he hit? Three or four? Four. four to that four? Yes. That last game down in Houston. One of which he didn't necessarily hit into, but it, it was his plate appearance that it turned into a double play. As he'll cue this one foul. Well, that was a great play in the pop-up. Right, on Simmons. By Simmons. That was on uh, Sunday, the only win the Astros had, four to one. 4-6-3, the tough double play pop-up. A 2-3 strike him out, throw him out, double play. And a 6-4-3. And one thing you notice when Bandy's setting up in and the step off is to look and see if is going to steal. That's more of a setup just to make sure the hitter is aware that maybe go inside, but then he'll probably go away with a pitch. And that's exactly what Bandy's going to do. So often when you see a sign from a manager to throw over or step off as a pitcher, the catcher will set up inside just in case you're looking back as a hitter. And then you're aware that maybe he's going to try to beat me inside, and then you go back away a little bit late on the swing. Short lead for Correa at first. Gurriel takes low. Two balls and two strikes. Bouncer, right side. Cowards only plays to first. They get the out. Correa ends up at second with one out. It'll bring up Reed. Hey, I get you red on as the Angels take on the Astros on Sunday. That is 12.05, and it's also Fan Appreciation Day. Fans in attendance will receive a team photo courtesy of Chevrolet. While supplies last, just go to angels.com slash promotions to get your tickets today. One out, one on. Here's A.J. Reed, the first baseman. Forty-fourth game for Reed. He'll lift this one high and deep toward the right field corner. Cole moving over, and this one is foul. Wow, that was not real by close. much either. Yes. Gave it a ride. It just took foul, and it's difficult here. Jeffrey Hillman's going to have that checked. 
Yep. yep. Foul. You can see the baseball way by the foul pole. Six four, two 275 pound first baseman. Indiana native. We'll look at a strike. No balls, two strikes. 23 year old. University of Kentucky product. Astros second round pick at 2014. Downstairs. Great at Triple A Fresno this year hit 291, 15 home runs, 50 runs batted in, a 924 OPS, carried a 368 on base percentage. See parts of uh, three seasons in the minors, total of 61 home runs. He had 34 combined last year. A ball and double A. It bounced this one over to the right side. Crone to the backhand's got it. Two down. Correa advances to third. Right fielder. So it's the right fielder, Teoscar Hernandez. Two on nine average at the major league level. Through 38 games for Hernandez, five doubles, four home runs, and nine runs batted in. Angels had a man in scoring position and trout in the first inning and left him at third. And the right trying to return the favor here in the second. Lead-off single for Correa. Good off-speed pitch. Change it. Even up to count at one and one. Hernandez is a 23-year-old native of the Dominican Republic. Late on the fastball. One and two. Kid has good speed. 29 stolen bases this year at the minor league level. Good try on that breaking ball. Good curveball. Credit Hernandez for not chasing that one. Two two on the way. And that's upstairs. Another full count. Jason Castro, the catcher on deck. Three two on the way. And that is pulled down the left field line. Another high fastball, and that will stay fair. It'll Bound into the seats, and Houston will take a 1 0 lead on Hernandez's double, his sixth of the year, 10th RBI. You know, like we said, coming into the game, if he's going to miss, you want to miss low, not miss upstairs. Change up, upstairs. And Hernandez stayed back on that one well, lines that into the corner for a ground rule double. Sixth double, 10th RBI. Good swing on that changeup mistake by Daniel Wright. We mentioned that 400 on base percentage and two strike counts for Wright over the last month. The two hits here have come with two strikes. Correa to lead off the inning and Hernandez here with a double to give the Astros the early 1 0 lead. So Castro will bat. Fouls the first one back. 2 on 9 average for Castro, 11 home runs, 32 runs batted in.
10 pitches in the first for right 22 so far this inning. Bouncer toward Crow comes in. Fields it cleanly. Will take it himself. The Astros take the early lead on a single and a double. One nothing. Houston as we head to the bottom of the second. Start at the bottom of the second inning. Stay tuned later tonight to the postgame show for the business of sports. Brought to you by AutoNation.com and powered by AutoNation Toyota Buena Park. Happy Friday to everyone at home watching, listening. Happy Oktoberfest. Yes. Although, we're not quite to October tomorrow. Close. But they're celebrating it here. We might. We may or may not be doing it right now. Yes, it Cheers. is. Friday and Saturday yeah. celebrating. The Gate One Music Garden, if I remember the read properly. And Simmons is off for the Angels. Like it's Brad Peacock. Peacock allowed a one out walk and nothing more. That's a pretty good food down there. Yeah. They're cheering for Oktoberfest. Yeah. Time called. Simmons ahead of the count of 3 0. They weren't eating uh, any Wiener schnitzels down there, though. Peacock's ready. That's it for a strike. Three one breaking ball in the boys gotten back in the counts too and he's able to throw that little cut fastball or slider behind in the count three one especially with a leadoff hitter and that's the thing we've talked even in between innings for Daniel Wright that's what you look for you're seeing way Peacock is throwing the baseball in, in those certain counts you don't have to throw a fastball every time Trust the breaking ball, and you're able to throw it for strikes or close enough, you're going to get hitters to chase it. Hitters always want to be in fastball counts. This one lifted out to right field toward the corner, slicing away from Hernandez, but as mentioned, he's got good speed, he drops it. In and out of the glove, Simmons will get the second base. You know, at the last second, kind of drifted with that baseball, and what should have been the first out instead, Simmons. As the leadoff man ends up in scoring position. See him go right to the corner. He got around the baseball well, but then reaches out at the last second, and it's off his glove for a two-base error. Second error for Hernandez this year. 
I mean, he did everything right as far as getting around to be able to be in good fielding position. Then all of a sudden, last second, reached for it. When he got to that point, it could have been a much easier play for him. So Jeff Bandy will bow with a man in scoring position. Jet hitting 235 with eight home runs and 25 runs batted in. He's behind the plate Wednesday night against Oakland. Ended up going one for four. Had a double with a run scored. This one pulled toward the hole and past Correa. And you always have to just wait till the ball gets to the outfield. And the ball hit to the left side. So Bandy picks up a single, and the Angels have runners at the corners. And a pitch down, lower part of the strike zone, a pitch that Bandy hits very, very well. See that little breaking ball. Went down and got it. Talked about the power that Bandy has. Lower part of the strike zone. Pitchers, they made a little bit of an adjustment to Jet and going upstairs on the fastball. Downstairs, though, hits the ball well every time. Rafael Ortega tonight the starting center fielder with Trout DHing. His average at 229 now. Infield back at double play depth. 64th game for Ortega this year at the major league level. He's ahead of the count of 2-0. All of a sudden in this game, unlike the last game out for Peacock against the Angels, behind in some counts even though he's been able to get back into him with his breaking ball. As a hitter, you're starting to lay off that breaking ball out of the strike zone and fastball counts. Three and out. That's how the inning started, three and out on Simmons. Peacock already with four three ball counts. Certainly not what he was doing Saturday night. It was five innings. He had three and zero in his career versus the Angels for the four ERA. Ortega looks at a strike. Simmons at third, Bandy at first. Pulled foul into the dugout. Full count. Ortega trying to get a pitch elevated enough to drive in the air to at least get a sack fly. Peacock keeping, it, keeping everything down at the knees, lower part of the strike zone to try to get a ground ball. Bandy's on the move. Three twos inside. He walked him. And they're loaded up. With the bases loaded, let's take a look at a game break down in Atlanta. Detroit Tigers trying to stay alive in the wild card race. Well, they're counting on their superstar, Miguel Cabrera. Not one, but two home runs for the Tigers as they lead Atlanta 6-2. to two. And some good news for Tiger fans. Toronto losing. See the Tigers a game and a half back at that final spot. Basically one back in the loss come. They'll have to play on Monday and make up a game against Cleveland. It was rained out yesterday. But Miguel Cabrera doing what he does best, the big fly. It is going to be a lot of fun these last couple days in Major League Baseball. So many teams still alive for a playoff spot. Caleb rips one out toward right center field. Hernandez not going to get there. It'll go to the wall. Simmons in to score easily. Bandy's coming in to score. Ortega being waved around. He will come in to score. And going to third base is Coward. A bases clearing double for Caleb, and the Angels have a 3-1 lead. Yeah, that's a great moment for Caleb. He's been struggling hitting the ball of late. He's played some solid defense, but got a pitch to drive. He got a fast ball down and hit that ball very well to right center field.
the happy zone for a left-handed batter. Calvert did not miss that one. Split the alley, right center field. Picking up his fourth double. And all the runners being aggressive. Ron Renicky taking that shot. As Ortega scores all the way from first after he worked the walk. But good base running, too, by Ben. He knew that ball wasn't going to be caught. He cruised in easily the second run and then the hustle for Ortega, the third run. There's J-Man Joy in the infield in for Houston. Still nobody out. G-Man hitting 165 with four doubles, five home runs, 12 RBIs. Started the season as a rule five selection by the Angels. After the Orioles signed him this offseason, it came up in the Mariners organization. The set down, cleared waivers, became a member of the Angels, and then uh, back up a couple of times since. One, two. Lays off. Two balls, two strikes. Dale Scott saying he checked his swing. The inning started with the error by Hernandez at right. On a lazy fly ball down the line. It should have been caught for the first down. Another full count. Well, we talked about it in the opening. The Angels have had those big innings, scoring some crooked numbers who already three in this inning. Still no outs, man on third. Fifth full count for Brad Peacock. Top of the order, Calhoun on deck. Three, two, and he lays off. Boy, with the what, three straight breaking balls down and in. Second walk of the inning. Still nobody out. Cole coming to the plate. Right number 56. Cole Brett Strom, the pitching coach, coming out for his first visit. Forty-four pitches for Peacock in this game. Very different than what we saw in Houston. 25 of them with strikes, 19 out of the strike zone. Talked about that as far as go-tos against him. Don't chase that off speed. So far, the hitters have done a real good job of adjusting this inning against them. Call skies one to Jose Altuve, I believe. Makes the catch. That was way up there. That was odd in that early on, it looked like he was looking at Correa. Do you think maybe a left-handed swing, the ball might slice yeah. a little bit more? He started angling his yeah. body. Correa was there just in case, and even a little stutter step toward the end there. He wasn't sure. If Jose was going to take it. Zach right, Trout coming to play. Now it's time for in the driver's seat. Brought to you by Kia. With Trout once again doing what he does best this season. And that is scoring runs by the ton. Scored a 600th career run in game number 808 of his career. All-time leader Ricky Henderson scored his 600 runs in his first 805 games. The all-time leader, Trout, just a few runs behind. That pitch nowhere near the strike zone. Peacock probably going to be very careful with Trout. But two men on and three runs already in. Trout worked the walk in the first and stole two bases. So Mike, uh, 29 home runs, 99 RBIs, 29 stolen bases. 
One home run. One bag for a 30 30 season. And this is one of those those pitches probably coming from Peacock. He's going to try to throw something going down and away. That's where truck can drive at the right center. Lays off. And to credit Trout this season, he's had a lot of games in which, you know, a lot of times you'll see guys expand their strike zone. Well, he's been very, very patient, but as we could tell by that on base percentage, number of walks this season. Boy, got a fastball right over the heart of the plate, fouled right back into Castro. And his zone, lower part of the strike zone. Hopefully, Astros okay. That ball fouled him, went right back. It's a low fastball. Straight off the mask. I was talking to Mike Sosha about that, the difference between when he was catching and when you see a lot of catchers now. Yeah, they have that a little bit better as far as the metal or, or what they have on the mask, but it's the padding that's not the same where the padding absorbed a lot more of the, the trauma with the baseball coming back as compared to the little bit lighter mask where they could see it and move around quicker as a catcher. 2-1. Fastball in there. 2-2. Two two. Breaking pitch. Fouled off on the first base side. Reed coming down. State pitch by Peacock right over the heart of the plate. A little backup breaking ball. Yeah, I'd be real surprised if he doesn't make that adjustment. I almost tried to bounce this breaking ball. And a lot of room on that right side of the infield. If he's going away with a lot of pitches, Trout can hit a ground ball to the right side and easily get that one through for a base hit right in that zone right there for Trout to be able to pick up that 100th RBI. Coward at third, Joy at first. A two ball, two strike count. Three runs in. A bases loaded double by Caleb Coward. Fourth double of the year. Now with eight RBIs. 2 2 now. Turkey pitch, check, swing. He went around. Lance Barrett rings him up on the check swing. Two outs. Trout gave him a little look on that one as he walks back to the dugout. He goes down and away where we thought that adjustment was going to be made. Pretty close to the only crossed the plate though. I think he got him. Far enough across the plate. A lot of times Trout will don't even I mean, he'll point down there towards first if he thinks that maybe he can get away with it, but he didn't do so on that one. I'll let Adrian Beltre. He never has any fun. No. Carl struck out on the first. Peacock with three punch outs. Three walks. Foul back. No balls, two strikes. Choice on the move, hit the double steal. Here comes Caleb Power. He'll score. Choi, oh, run away from AJ Reed. Now, if he went right back in the Reed, he could have made contact and been awarded the second base. It's close. Yeah. Coward stolen base. Makes it a four-run inning. We'll head to the third with the Angels up four to one.
top of the third. And that last inning textbook is worthy of the Carl's Cam replay, a double steal. G-Man Choi stopped right in the middle of the base path. Great read on the throw by Coward to be able to come in and score on that stolen base to home. Good rundown, though, by Choi. Set up perfectly, so both Choi and Coward excellent as far as getting that extra run in that inning. Well, Daniel Wright starts the third with a four-run lead. Nice Caleb inning by overall by Caleb. Yeah. Three-run double and st steal of home. Second career stolen base. This was lined over to third. Marte has got it. One down. Marisnik retired for the first down. Again, that uh, pitch in the first inning that was effective for Wright was whatever it was, a little two-seamer. Had a little riding action in on the hands of a right-handed batter. That's the pitch he just got Marisnik on. Yeah, when he's throwing the four-seam fastball away against right-handed batters, it straightens out, it's elevated, becomes a hittable pitch. That two-seamer inside on the hands of right-handed batters has been very effective. Well, nine-game hitting streak for Springer. Hit a fly ball to left to lead off the game. So he's 0 for 1. One ball, two strikes. That's that fastball, four seam fastball upstairs now. Middle, middle in. Again, Springer. That's trouble. Away. He's at a tough time. He pulls off the baseball for the most part on pitches away. Not a whole lot of bite to that breaking pitch tonight. That's uh, almost. Slow enough, if you will, that uh, a hitter could make an adjustment on. I think when you look at Daniel Wright as he progresses in his major league career, I think throwing at times that curveball a little bit harder, a quicker break to it. It's over to third. Marte's got it. Throw pulls off. Probe. Tag applied. Two down. They get you red on. Join us for a pregame Oktoberfest celebration yet again in the Gay One Music Garden. That's coming up tomorrow. 6.05 start for the Angels and the Astros. Enjoy a variety of beers, live music, and more. And I know Gooby loves more. More. Go to angels.com slash promotions for more information. Tomorrow's yeah. October 1st. Yes. October 1st, October Fest. By the way, I already started my uh, Halloween decorations that yesterday. That did not surprise me. <laughs> you started uh, when we were halfway to Christmas. Yes. So June 25th. <laughs> yeah. We had halfway to St. Patty's Day yet? <laughs> I suppose they Sunday. Uh, is it halfway to Easter yet? Almost. Almost. <laughs> Marwin Gonzalez up. <laughs> He's tired of all, all the halfway to whatever holidays being celebrated nowadays. <laughs> Gonzalez popped down in the first. Trying to bunt his way on. That's a beauty. Infield base hit. A two out single for Marvin Gonzalez. And it'll bring up Altuve. Well, when you have Altuve coming up after you, it's not a bad play, especially when it's available for you. We saw that a lot down in Houston for Gonzalez. He has a high leg kick, but he's thinking all along he's going to bunt right down the third baseline. So it makes you freeze as, a, as an infielder, and then he lays down a perfect bunt for a single, allowing Altuve to come to the plate now with someone on. Another batting title for Jose Altuve. On the American League crown two seasons ago, the 341 batting average. He went batting 337. Fly ball to right in the first inning. She's 0 for 1. This was line to left, a base hit. So back to back singles with two outs. 
And Correa will come to the plate. The change up a couple times already in this game. Daniel Wright has missed the middle part of the plate on his changeup. We always talk about all those numbers out too, babe. 348 on inside pitches, 390 on high pitches, but still pretty effective on all speed pitches. 309 batting average, stayed back on that changeup well and lines it in the left field. Mentioned uh, Altuve's 337 batting average, best in the American League, not the best in baseball though. DJ LeMahieu at 349 for the Rockies. Daniel Murphy right on his heels at 347. And he won't be playing anymore during the regular season for the Nationals. LeMahieu, a great defender too. Gene Segura had a nice season for the Diamondbacks, the one-time Angel at 320 for them. Yeah, Fourth nice. best in the National League. Yeah, nice bounce back season for him. Correa had a single to right and scored in the second. That's a strike. It's that time you really, we, we talk about it so much, that shutdown inning, but for Daniel Wright and his confidence, very important inning here, especially against a very good hitter in Correa at the plate. 1-1. One, 1-2. One. One very similar to the pitch he lined in the right field his last about a high fastball Looks like Correa is looking away against Wright. Now might be the time he can run that two seam fastball in off the plate. Run it in on his hands. He's locked in on a fastball away. We're going back away. Trying to run it back. Misses. Two balls, two strikes. That's not a good feeling when you're a pitcher. You throw a pitch you think is pretty good and he's just tracked it and did not chase it. That tells you he is looking away against you. Full count. Now you're going to get the runners going on the next pitch. The two outs. We tied the first two batters. Liner by Marisnik, the grounder by Springer. But Gonzalez a little bunt single. Now two bay base hit the left and now full count on Correa, dangerous hitter. Back outside. He's bounce foul. Number three two change up kick save by Alfredo Griffin. And going back in this at bat against Correa, missed opportunity, I think, on the one two pitch to be able to run a fastball in on him. So like most really good hitters look in early, then look away late, especially knowing the power that the hitter has. You're going to try to go away. He can hit the ball very well. We've seen that in the past going the other way, including a base hit to right field tonight. Now the payoff, and that is a called strike three. And he went right after it. Perez taking it, and the Strokes will leave two on. Angels lead it four to one.
Sports West is brought to you by Subaru, making the world a better place. That's why we donate to causes we care about. By El Pollo Loco, new chicken tenders. Try them today at El Pollo Loco. And by Longo Toyota, number one for 49 straight years. There must be a reason. Why go anywhere else? Handles up by the score of 4-1. to C.J. Crone, who was at the plate and the, uh, the last time the Angels were up, lead things off. Struck out in the first inning. It'll be Crone, Marte, and Simmons here in the third against Peacock. Uh, CJ just can't figure out the right hander. Fastball, a little flare down the line, and that is foul. He ran that little two seamer in on CJ Crone. A lot of times we'll talk about that sneaky little fastball that he has that arm angle that Peacock throws at. One ball, two strikes. He needs to get just two hits. In that second inning, seven, seven men to the plate. Error by Hernandez, two walks by Peacock. That's pulled out to left field. That was a changeup. Oh, down. Change up down, middle part of the plate. Hips opened up early for Chrome, but kept the bat back long enough to line it. There's Jeffrey Marte. Ground ball to third base in the first inning. Nice pickup, nice surprise for the Angels. Takes a strike, but uh, third base takes his natural position, left field. Escobar has been dealing with a sore right shoulder, so hasn't played in a couple days. Talked about Marte. On the pregame show, as far as some of the younger guys might have a shot at making that 25 man roster, this ability to play some different defensive position. You know, he can hit the baseball well. Good power. That's out toward left field. Hit pretty well. Ball with Gonzalez running back. And he'll pull up. That is gone. Big fly for Jeffrey Marte. And it's a 5 1 Angels lead. What were you saying? <laughs> I think I'm he sorry has to good, interrupt you. I, I think he has good power. <laughs> <laughs> Again, in that conversation for next season, when you think about it, 14 home runs, 14 doubles for Marte. And the thing he's been much better on is breaking balls hitting. And the exit velocity off his bat has been pretty consistent when he gets that opportunity, especially when he gets a lot of playing time. Hits that one over to 397, little Jersey Mike sub sign. Case is clear for Simmons. He'll yank one down the left field line, and that is just foul. Had home run distance, too. That's pesky pole esque <laughs> down the left field line. Incoming. How'd that feel? You know what, though? It did not spill no. a drop of beer. No. Impressive. Especially celebrating Oktoberfest. Yes. See those home runs and doubles last three games for Marte for the Marte Parte continues. The one outside. Simmons reached on the air by Hernandez in right field in the second. Scored one of the four runs. Certainly made the adjustment to the American League. Took him a little while, but Figured it out. It's a little too hopper to Gurriel. Two down. See that home run? Ben trying to make the play on that home run ball. Oh my. I think he's got it though. Yes. Perseverance. Should thank that lady right there. Yeah. He would have face planted right into the Defense. 
Great effort though to get that home run ball from Marte. Thankfully that ball hit his hand. Otherwise he's wearing that. <laughs> Checking his phone right now. Yeah. Uh, am I on the TV right now? I can't feel my fingers, but I'm texting somebody. Out to center field, Marisnik. Put it away, and uh, that's the only damage for the Houston Astros. Home run by Jeffrey Bartes, 14th of the season. His 43rd RBI giving the Angels five one lead. Just another impressive swing for Marte, 14th home run of the season. Coors Banquet back on this date. 1992 at Angel Stadium. George Brett singled for his 3,000th career hit. 30 players now have 300 or more career hits. George Brett got here in this ballpark. Had four hits in that game. But they get picked off at first after getting number 3,000. Pop a cold one with them after the game? Or three? Yeah, possibly. He had no idea. His shoulder was really hurt. He didn't even think he was going to play the game. I'll never forget that. And he said, yeah, I'll give it a shot. We're all thinking, well, you're four hits away from 3,000. What does he do? Gets four hits. That's a foul ball. Or did it hit him? I got him on the forearm. It sounded like it hit uh, the knob of the bat, but he wears that uh, protective thing on the uh, forearm. Right trying to pitch inside. So Guriel will take first base. Is that two seam fastball? Yeah, get some of that elbow area. The back elbow. Yep. The right arm. Ouch. I still think that's a better pitch for him than that four seam fastball. Yes. I mean, I, you could almost go exclusively with that two seamer, just try to work both sides of the plate. And then eventually the hitters will start looking, and then that fastball away becomes more effective. The pitch he threw the Correa was going because it was down and away. There's A.J. Reid, the first baseman. Takes a strike. Reid grounded out to Crone in his second inning at bat. So he's 0 for 1. About those numbers last year in the minor leagues 34 bombs, 127 ribeye stakes, 30 doubles. 30 doubles. That's 64 extra base hits. Oh, he got him on the off speed. Pulls it foul. No balls, two strikes. According to Baseball America, end of the season, he's the number one prospect, best power hitter, best hitter for average in the Astros organization. I've had some good ones. Make the major league level of late, too. Young talent. A.J. Hinch certainly has a lot of young players. Future's bright for the Astros. Took a little bit of a step backwards this year after such a magical season last year. That one's queued up the third base side foul. 
and were e even leading Kansas City in game four to try to close that one out late. What was it, six to two in the seventh inning before the Royals came back, won game four, and then eventually won game five in Kansas City in that divisional series. O2 upstairs the fastball what we've seen against Reed so far is inner half of the plate danger zone soft off speed breaking balls going away and down very effective Goriel hit by a pitch stands at first at Reed goes down swinging on the off speed pitch. One down, second strike yeah, for Daniel. Very good change up there from Wright. Stayed back on that one well. A circle change, turned that one over, going down and away for a swing and miss. So one out, one on. Here's Hernandez. Pulled a double down the left field line. Ground rule double. Sixth of the year. And foul this one back. Pretty good rip at a pitch in the middle of the part of the zone. With his speed, tough guy to double up. All you could hope for is that he hits it at somebody and sharply. Has grounded into four double plays in 38 games. See that late little movement. That was a great view to be able to see as a fan watching this game. That late movement like that, especially how quick you have to react as a hitter. Run! Downstairs. Two balls, one strike. See movement going down and away. In on the pitch before. Two one. Bouncer off the glove. Simmons will touch the bag. Fire the first and got him. It never hey, gets, gets old, does it? it? He does everything so well. It, it's amazing. The redirect is still able to get a double play out of it for Andleton Simmons.
Five to one, and you're right. I mean, a nice pitch, but got some great help as our top tier play brought to you by Arco. Ground ball up the middle off his club. Been able to redirect. Anderson Simmons get to that baseball and got a lot on that throw to complete a one six three double play. That's a lot on a throw because Hernandez runs well. He needed all that arm, and he's got a great arm. Handles up 5-1 here, the bottom of the fourth inning. Bottom third of the order coming up. Ortega Cower to Choi. Brad Peacock so far with three strikeouts, three walks, three hits allowed. Thrice the fun. Ortega lifting one. Shallow centered appears. Again, Altuve. Glance over to uh, Correa. I think it's a product of just maybe not reading the ball from the batter. He just it doesn't look like they're messing around, joking around. No. Like we see Beltre do with Andrews. Or we saw when Johnny Giovatello was here. Every time anything well, was yeah. hit in the air, Simmons would go over there every single play. It's just interesting to see that twice now in the game. A one pitch, one out to start this fourth. Here's Caleb Coward. Bases clearing double. And also stole home. He's already had a big game. That was just the second inning. Coward hits one out to right. Got jammed. Two down. And both Hernandez just slipped there. Like he went to plant. You see the frustration there when he throws that baseball back in. Rather mild night, 80 degrees at first pitch. Getting cooler. It's a really nice weekend. I think it's supposed to be in the 70s on Monday. 74 on Sunday. Is there last Monday? What was 106? What's 106? It's a dry heat. <laughs> Two man Choi takes outside. Choi walked his first plate appearance. A real good job as far as on that double steal where he stopped and got in a rundown to allow Coward to steal home. Both players very good on that play. Joy will go down swinging a one two three inning for Peacock. We head to the fifth. It's a five one Angels lead. Season where all that matters is October. The NLDS starts October the 7th on FS1. Gooby, tell us all about the National League Wildcard. Well, card. we know when division winners are, but that wild card race, so the Mets in very good position, but 
San Francisco playing the Dodgers. You know the Dodgers would like to knock them out. It's been it's tied up there. St. Louis won today. They got a controversial win last night on a walk-off double. It could have been a ground rule double, but it picked up the victory. That won't be decided. I don't think that last wild card spot till Sunday, maybe even into Monday. And the Mets, though, really short on pitching themselves. They've had a lot of injuries, but they've played well. They're starting to swing the bats pretty well. Speaking of short on pitching, how about the, uh, the Cleveland Indians? Be interesting. Let's see what happens. Terry Francona, always the, one of the most positive people you'll ever be around. Castro shoots one up the alley at right center field for a leadoff single to start this fifth inning. The interesting uh, thing that comes into play is remember the Indians and the Tigers got rained out. So there is a makeup game to be played that could impact not only the wild card, but also the best record overall. Although, who knows what happens between uh, Saturday and Sunday? It'll be Monday afternoon. Yeah, Monday and then. Afternoon. You, then I'm sure the Tigers at that point, depending on how their rotation set up, you're going to have to use one of your top pitchers to be able to get into the wild card game. Yeah, there's no tomorrow. I mean, you, you've got to go with your guy, whoever's turn it is. Verlander, I think it's scheduled. What's he scheduled Sunday? That sounds right. The Tigers now with their win tonight over Atlanta, just a half game back. Of the Toronto Blue Jays for that second wild card spot with that half game yeah. advantage, if you will. Seattle's staying in there. They're already up five to nothing on Oakland. Although they need a lot of help. Now in that fifth inning, you can't look ahead as a pitcher. Back to back batters behind 2 0 for Daniel Wright. Foul back. And Verlander is scheduled for that Sunday game for the Tigers in Atlanta. And, that's, and Atlanta's been playing great baseball themselves. And that'll be the last game at that stadium before moving into a new one next year for Atlanta. Freddie Freeman, I think, this had his 30 game history snap yesterday. He's been hitting the ball very well for Atlanta. So they're, they're hitting the ball. And scoring a lot of runs. Mareznik pulls one foul. Two balls, two strikes. And they kept Kemp batting behind him. I think that's what I've been seeing. Yeah, they've been they've been hitting some long balls. Remember, in the beginning part of the year, the only guy who was hitting home runs was Freddie Freeman. Certainly, it's helped Freeman with Matt Kemp uh, being picked up in the trade. Two two Marisna goes down swinging one out. Over two night for uh, Jake. Yeah, he chased the high fastball well out of the strike zone. See the four seam rotation in the fastball. Springer takes a strike. One thing you notice with Anderson Simmons is a shortstop here because he's thinking in terms of a double play ball. He plays a little more shallow in that infield dirt. A lot of times you'll see a shortstop playing back the dirt in the grass area. He's playing up, trusting his quickness, lateral movement on the even on the backhand glove side. And you have Springer who is very quick. Running down better opportunity for him to potentially turn another double play. Oh, two. Staying away against Springer. Very good inside, although he does have eight opposite field home runs. But a couple times I've seen over over the season where it's that inside out approach at home, hitting it out at Minute Maid Park. A swing and a miss. Down goes Springer. Two down. Back to back strikeouts for Daniel. Solid breaking ball there from right. 
See the tight rotation, that slider going down and away. Very good one. You get a swing and miss from right. So two outs, Castro still at first. Marvin Gonzalez had himself a bunt base hit in his last plate appearance. Certainly the batter Daniel Wright would love to get right now, especially with who's on deck. Nice block by a jet bandy and then all speed pitch in the dirt. Bouncer over to Crow. Nice job by Wright giving up the single to lead things off for the Hitting the next three. We're headed to the bottom of the fifth. Angels still on top. In the bottom of the fifth inning, I want to remind you that this copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority of the Los Angeles Angels and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Angels Baseball LP. Cole bouncing this one foul for strike one. Calhoun so far. 0 for 2. Strike down to pop up. No balls, two strikes. Only on this one for 14 in his career versus Peacock. He's had a pretty solid season against Houston coming into this game. 304 batting average with a home run and eight RBI against the Astros this season. One or two. Peacock originally a 41st round pick at a 
Palm Beach Community College as a uh, back then the draft and follow. It was a draft pick by the Nationals. Been with Houston since 2013 at the major league level up and down. Change up missing down today. Two balls, two strikes. He got traded to the A's 2011 in the Gio Gonzalez trade and then came over in February of 2013. The Jet Lowry deal. Full count. Trout on deck, Crone to follow. Peacock's coming off a one, two, three, fourth inning. First time he's retired the side in order. Sixth full count for Peacock in this game. Both pitchers have had some full counts. And he walked him. Lead off walk after getting ahead 0 2. Mike Trout come into play now. We'll take a look at our tools of the trade brought to you by Ram Trucks. Trout, talk about all the things he could do so well on a baseball field, but also avoiding a tag. Throw beats him there to third. Hero unable to make the tag. Trout gets that hand in, both front hand and then the back hand to be able to hold on to the base. Two steals in one inning. The first angel to do so since Eric Ibar did back in June 25th, 2014. John fouling off the first pitch. Worked a walk in the first inning, struck out on a check swing in the second. Breaking ball, and that is uh, called strike. Got him to chase. He break a ball off the plate. Last at bat. Now it's been very good on off speed pitches coming to game. 309 batting average versus off speed. 310 versus breaking balls. Castro set up off the plate. They go fastball and they got him. One down. They brought that two seamer back on the outside corner at 92. You know, he was able to bring that one back. Freeze is a hitter. Thinking initially out of his hand it's going to be a ball. Runs back and catches the corner. One out, one on. C.J. Crone at the plate. He'll take a strike. Crone over two with a strike out, a fly ball to left. So Peacock now with the five strikeouts, four walks, 84 pitches for the right-hander, 52 have been strikes. Back up the middle, and that's a base hit. Good swing there from C.J. Crone, right back up the middle. I'm going back to my Hyundai key for this game to be successful. Don't let me down. We talked about bunching hits together. We saw that in the second inning. We've seen that throughout this homestand. Another opportunity for the Angels to add on here. With another good swing, good walk by Cole, and a good swing from C.J. Crone, bringing up Marte, who homered his last at bat. First one's down and away. Going for two night for uh, Jeffrey. Picked up his 14th home run in the third. Fastball for a strike. And see. When you start comparing 
Peacock to right. He had two right handers on the mound. Brad could get his fastball into the low 90s, 92, 93. You see a lot of guys taking fastballs because he has been able to throw the breaking pitch pretty much yep. at any point for a strike. And he hides the baseball well. I mean, if you're a hitter, he keeps that front shoulder in, that the throwing arm behind the back, very deceptive. And all of a sudden, for that arm angle he throws at, it's not over the top, so where a hitter gets to see the baseball a little bit longer out of his hand. It is right on you. Pretty good idea of how difficult it's going to be to be able to see the baseball out of his hand. Boom, it's right on you there. That's an overthrown breaking ball. Gets away from Castro. Calhoun turns and will stop at third. Peacock alertly covering the plate. Back in the third inning on a breaking ball. From Peacock against Marte. Talked about how he's made some adjustments on off-speed pitches. That's all his power. Hit the ball that far on a breaking ball. 14th home run of the season, an opportunity to pick up another RBI or two in this at bat. The two at bats he's had against Peacock in this game, the first two he's ever had against the right hander. Jeffrey did not play in Saturday's game in Houston. Infield in for the Astros. 5 1 Angels. We are in the fifth. Calhoun at third, Crone at second. 2 2. Fastball away, full count. Some movement now going on in the. Uh, Astros bullpen. Ground ball to short. Going on contact is Calhoun. The throw is high. Now Colton just try to stay in the rundown until Marte can try to get to second and he will get there. Two outs. Good shot by Cole to stay in that run down long enough to allow Marte to get all the way to second base. Runs and then stops after he tried to do as a base runner. Force another throw or at least a longer tag. Marte gets into second base, takes away that force out. Second base. Simmons reach on the error in the second, grounded out in the third. Over tonight. It's 277 batting average with runners in scoring position this season. There's a base hit to right field. Crow will score. Marte is going to be waved around. The throw from Hernandez, not even close, and it allows Simmons to get the second. 7 1 Angels. Simmons picks up his 43rd and 44th runs batted in. Talk about that good batting average with runners in scoring position. Goes the other way. We've seen that throughout this season for Simmons. Stay back on this fastball. Lines it in the right field, and because Cole Calhoun got in that long rundown, allow Marte to get the second. He's able to score now on that base hit, two RBI single, and it's Simmons. Peacock's night has come to an end in the fifth inning with two outs, a pitching change, and the Angels leading at seven to one.
This telecast of Angels Baseball on Fox Sports West is brought to you by Infinity. Visit your local Southern California Infinity retailer for a test drive today. Brad Peacock's night comes in after four and two thirds. Five hits, seven runs, five earned. Still responsible for Simmons standing at second base. John Del Gustave takes over on the mound. They're in and out. Who's in? Who's out? Gustave with a big arm. Pitching in his 13th major league game. 1 0 mark in a 3.29 ERA. Gustave fastballs 95 to 99 range in a hard slider. It's about 35% of the time. 23 year old Dominican. Comes in to face Jet Banding. Angels catcher. Gustave, Triple A Fresno this year. 47 games all out of the pen. 3 and 3 mark. 3.79 ERA with three saves. And he gets jammed, fouls it back. No balls in the strike. Jet one for two with a single and a fly ball to center. The Angels with four runs in the second, one in the third, and two so far here in the fifth. The opening game of this three-game series, the final weekend of the regular season. Down it in. Evens up the count at a ball at a strike. Look at the scoreboard. Seattle continues to lead Oakland five to nothing. And he pulls a foul, one and two. Boston ended up winning. That's their 93rd victory. Texas won. That's their 95th victory. And Cleveland won. That's their 92nd. Be hard pressed for Texas to uh, not finish with the best record. They are playing the Rays at home as Bandy lifts and found and out of play. So if the playoffs started tonight. Or tomorrow, I should say, then it looked like Texas would play the wild card winner, and then with Boston would play Cleveland, with Boston get the home field advantage in the in that series. Should Texas have the overall best record, and should Toronto somehow win a wild card game? Yeah, that that'd be Set fun. Set up the rematch, if you will. That would be fun. One, two. Bandy lines one out the left field. Gonzalez is there and almost overruns it. Makes a nice catch for the third out. The Angels add two. They lead it seven to one as we hit it to six. Your coverage of baseball. Here's my National League postseason awards. 
Get Chris Bryant winning the MVP, 39 home runs, 102 RBI. Max Scherzer is my Cy Young Award winner, 19 and 7. Corey Seager, what an outstanding season for the Dodgers Book of the Year. And Joe Madden, and her two wins. Cubs manager, my manager of the year. Dave Roberts has done a great job too with the Dodgers. Max Scherzer, though, 6.5 war. As far as best pitcher in the National League, a lot of people think of John Lester, Kyle Hendricks for the Cubs. Scherzer's been outstanding. 223 and a third innings pitch for the Nationals. Daniel Wright back on the bump here in the sixth inning. Halos with a 7-1 to one lead and a boatload of changes on the defensive side of things. We'll start in the outfield and left. Nick Buss takes over out there. Shane Robinson is at right field. Cliff Pennington, the new shortstop. And G-Man Choi, who got the start at left, is over at first. So Crone, Calhoun, as well as Simmons, all now out of the lineup. Tuve leading things off takes a strike. He's one for two, a fly ball to right in the first, and a single in the third. Daniel Wright, four strikeouts, no walks, five hits allowed. Cody Eagie starting to loosen. Daniel's really starting to settle in. Going to be able to finish off this sixth inning. Already in line at this point to pick up his first Major League W. Two balls and two strikes. Breaking pitch, and this was out toward right center field. Hit well. Robinson racing back, still moving back. And as he steps out of the track, runs it down for the first down. As we always say, as soon as you get into that baseball game, you're going to get a baseball hit that way. Shortstop. Robinson able to run that one down. That might be a home run at Minime. High pitches. We talked about how well Altuve hits the high pitch. And he drives that one very well to the warning track just in front of the wall. And Shane Robinson able to run it down. Carlos Correa single with a run score to the second. Struck out looking into third. Off speed, sound like he broke his bat. Pennington has it. Two down. Hey, join us on Sunday for Fan Appreciation Day. Angels will celebrate our fans as we take on the Astros to wrap up the 2016 campaign. But remember, 12:05 start on Sunday. Fans in attendance will have a chance to win great prizes, courtesy of Apple Vacations, Secrets Resorts and Spa, as well as Yogurt Land and more. Visit uh, angels.com/promotions for more information. Paulino getting ready. So he will pitch the bottom of the sixth with Gustave wrapping up the fifth. Three yellow for one. Ground out in second, hit, hit by a pitch to the fourth. Out to left field, and that'll get down for a two out single. A.J. Reed, the left-handed batter coming up, and you wonder if Sosha. Nope, it's going to be Nagy coming out to pay a visit. Then you're right at 90 pitches right now. He's having a quick conversation with Charles Nagy. 55 of them strikes. 
Really did a nice job of making some adjustments as this game has progressed, especially lower part of the strike zone. Solid performance so far for Daniel Wright. He puts himself in a position to pick up his first Major League W. A real good changeup. Good adjustment in this game for Wright as far as his changeup. With a couple changeup upper part of the strike zone, it flattens out, becomes hittable, and it's going down and away. Very effective. Great 0 for two tonight. Grounded out in the uh, second inning, struck out in the fourth. And yeah, that was on that changeup going down and away in the fourth inning. Very similar to the first pitch he threw them in this at bat. Is again. Why? I mean, throw him another one. Yes. One thing we've seen from Reed, very strong. Inner half of the plate, he can hit a long way, but he hasn't made an adjustment, especially something all speed going down and away. See what Banny goes with here. Comes right back with a changeup. Now it's all about execution of the pitch. One, two. Kind of pulled through that one. Evens up the count of two balls and two strikes. Now two big. Harvey Guriel standing at first base. Down goes Reed. And the sixth is in the books. Nice job by Daniel Wright. We'll head to the bottom of the inning. Seven to one Angels. This telecast of Angels Baseball on Fox Sports West is brought to you by the three-row 2016 Mazda CX-9. Bottom of the six, seven, one, Angels. Uh, nice job by Daniel Wright so far through six. More than likely done. Matches his, uh, his Angels high. But he threw the last time out. Threw high in strikeouts with five tonight also. No walks. Impressive outing by Daniel Wright. One earned run, six hits allowed, 95 pitches. Well done by Wright. David Paulina in the game now for the Astros. Third career game, second in relief. 
Fastball 88 to 93 range slider curveball change up. There's a lot of curveballs. Frankie Ball is in there for a strike. 0 2 count on Rafi Ortega. He'll be followed by Caleb Cowan and G Man Choi. There's that curveball again you were talking about. Got a real good bite to it. Rafi tonight 0 for 1. Bouncer are foul. Couple of defensive changes for the Astros. Tony Kemp came as a pinch runner for Gurriel's in left field. This was hit to short. That's Marvin Gonzalez. Gonzalez started the game and left. That's why he's a shortstop. Now Correa is gone. Colin Moran at third base. Tyler White, the new second baseman. No other changes yet, but stay tuned. I'm sure there'll be more. Taker retired for the first down. That'll bring up Caleb Cower. Caleb, bases clearing double in the second, a fly ball to right in the fourth. Paul Lane, a 22 year old native of the Dominican Republic. Rookie ball, double A, triple A this year. Combined to go five and four with a two ERA. 90 innings at those three levels, 106 strikeouts, 19 walks. It's pretty good command. Yeah. Oh, nasty action there at the uh, at the end. They're tailing away from yeah, Caleb. That's a good changeup. Yeah, pretty good. I uh, mentioned that good curveball and good changeup too. Not overpowering with the fastball, but does have good movement on the pitch. He'll post you up too. Six seven. One one. Breaking ball and did not go. Says that's Dale that, Scott. That's a wicked curveball. See where this curveball starts. He has it basically is putting all that pressure on the middle finger, the index finger, basically off the baseball. Snaps that curveball, starts around belt high, ends up in the dirt. Bounce toward first foul. Very similar to the grip where Garrett Richards throws his curveball. Speaking of Richards, in line to make that start. Down in Arizona instructional league on Monday. Told me today feeling extremely good. That shoemaker next, Andrew Heaney, alongside Garrett Richards. Pretty good at bat working here for Coward with that bases clearing double. Second inning, stall home. This one gloved by the 6 7 Dominican. Tough to get anything by with that wingspan. Yes. As he falls towards first base bag, reaches up, makes a nice play. That ball was hit pretty good, too. By Coward. The follow through, reaches out, nice play. We get that ball underhand throw over the first base. 
So two outs, nobody on a G Man Choi up. Oh, for one with a walk and a strikeout. Takes downstairs. Two balls, two strikes now. Two, two. He's got peace. With Pennington is on deck. He was first plate appearance after taking over the top of the inning short. Astros with six hits tonight. The Angels with just five. Just take advantage of walks. This is this is fouled off. A miscue. The error by uh, Hernandez, the right fielder. The second opened up that inning. Angels ended up scoring four in the second. Montea home run of the third. The Angels tacking on two more in the fifth. That's in the opening. The Angels have won. Seven the last eight average and just under six runs a game. Well, seven runs here tonight. The offense continues on a roll. Up the middle, and this is sneaks through. A two out single. Almost too good of a breaking ball. The upper part of the strike zone, and G Man Choi did a nice job of keeping his hands back and grounded out through the middle. On his hands up, and lines are right by. Only in it for a hit. First plate appearance for Cliff. Fouls out with back. Veteran hitting 208 through 72 games this year. 10 extra base hits, 10 RBIs. Cued toward third. Moran off Dallas throw. And the Angels are done here in the sixth. We head to the seventh. Angels still leading it. Seven to one.
and the Angels lead the Astros 7-1. Part of Oktoberfest here. The Big A, Friday night, Saturday night. Pitching change for the Angels. Dave Valdez in the game now, taking over for Daniel Wright, who was excellent. 25th game for Valdez, 2-3 record, 4.64 ERA. Valdez, fastball is going to be 93-96 range, slider, split finger fastball. But what a job by Daniel Wright tonight in position to pick up his first major league victory. I like the fact no walks, did hit a batter, Gurriel, but uh, didn't let that affect him. And now let's see what Valdez does here in the seventh. Last pitch on Wednesday, three pitches, one-third of an inning. That's against Oakland. Bottom third of the order for Houston, Hernandez, Castro, and Marisnik. Unless uh, A.J. Hinch goes to the bench. The first one downstairs for ball one. To Oscar Hernandez, the right fielder. RBI double in the second, a double play ball in the fourth. One on one. Great call, hit over to third. Mateus got it. One down. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Watch every Adam Parking game live on the HD on over 400 supported devices. It includes a free subscription to AtBat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Just go to MLB.TV for details. Jason Castro, a base hit at his last at bat. That was the fifth leadoff knock, but he was stranded at first. One for two tonight, and there's a fastball that gets spiked about three feet in front of home plate. Somehow, Bandy gloved it. 98. Dan Isonia behind the plate is very thankful that Bandy was able to get that one. Good bounce back pitch for Valdez on that one. That one at 96 right on the corner. Down a left field line. Slicing away from Nick Boss, but he'll get there and make a catch. Nice play by Nick. Staying with it. Chili able to run that one down in the corner. Good read on this one. Got over there quickly. Cut that angle off. Make a nice play on that fly ball down the line. Never took his eyes off the baseball. Kept the head still. Knew exactly where the short wall was going to be. Marisnik tonight 0 for 2. Well, when Valdez stays under control, that's a good life on his fastball. It's when he gets too quick on his mechanics, tries a quick pitch. He's already landing, and the elbow drops and elevates a lot of pitches. One one. That's a cute foul. That's a great location again. 98 mile an hour fastball. That was one heck of a catch in the seats, by the way. Lunging to his right. And Mob appreciates yes. that catch. That what was a, play. a sweet play. Yes, it was. He had some congratulations, deservedly so. 
Or as it goes down, swinging Valdez with a one, two, three, seven. Stretch time here at the Big A, seven, one Halos. Take a look at our Honda Eagles probable starters for the final two games of the season. Tyler Skaggs on the mound tomorrow night. Last three starts, 2-0 with 1.50. And then Jared Weaver on Sunday, 150 career wins, 12 wins this season for Weave. In the bottom of the seventh inning, Trout leading things off. Paulino still on the mound, second inning of work. He looks at the strike. Kind of taking a lot of strikes, huh? Especially, I mean, he had been an aggressive, especially first pitch, guessing fastball, and successfully doing so. A walk at two strikeouts for Mike so far tonight. Upstairs, one ball, one strike. Did steal two bases in the first inning, so he's currently at 29. Stole the bases on the season. That's that nasty breaking ball. One home run, one RBI away from 30 home runs and 100 RBI. Remember that last game out, Axford from Oakland hit him right in that upper part of the shoulder to shoulder blade. Ground ball left side. Marvin Gonzalez has it. One away. That'll bring up Nick Buss for his first plate appearance. A couple of uh, Angel fans have their sides up. Addie Engelkin, Peyton Gant. They're chilling now. I think they're worn out. <laughs> Seven runs. Great hats, by the way. Oh, yes. Glad they can make it out. <laughs> Buss hitting 203 on the season. We well, command that curveball also. Right over the top also. It's a lot of arms and legs coming at you though. A little deception. There it is again. That's a 12-6. Sharp too at 81. Two down. Third baseman number. Jeffrey There's one of the signs that the girls had up. You're quite the catch. <laughs> Homecoming 2025. Why not? Yeah. So you're saying there's a chance. Yes. It's forward thinking. Yes, it is. 
Marte one for three with a home run. Tell you what, when you go back to the season, you know, that, that moment in Detroit where Trout gave that baseball to a fan, and when he ran to his dad, yeah. signed that baseball, that was one of the great moments of the season. That was that reaction was priceless. Paulino introducing his job to Marte. 1 0 count. Both teams with six hits tonight. Marte with a home run. Three infielders on the left side for Marte. Very confident and comfortable with his curveball. Back to it. That's a nasty pitch, man. That is. You're at the mercy of the home plate umpire on that pitch. Oh, one, two, three inning. We will head to the eighth. The sides are up. Angels up seven to one. The Angels leading the Astros by the score of seven to one. I'm Patrick O'Neill, and uh, wait, I'm getting some breaking news. What's that? Oh, I'm being told that tonight's Angels Live postgame show, brought to you by your SoCal Mazda dealers, will be the best one of the year. Hard to believe because they're all pretty darn good. Trout defying logic with these with these slides. How is he getting it done? Another Marte Parte, and of course Daniel Wright in line for his first major league victory. Mark Gubaza. I'm told you never forget your first. What was it like for you, my friend? Uh, oh, I got a victory, a complete game victory shutout against the Boston Red Sox. That was a lot of fun. Finishing off the game. Getting that baseball, still have it at home. Still have the scorecard from that game also. So I'm sure Daniel Wright will somehow, some way, if this holds up, will be able to keep that scorecard from his first Major League W. But it won't be as wicked awesome <laughs> as yours, right? <laughs> exactly. Celebrate with a little Pepperidge fam. I think the Rem Dog was there too. He might have been in the lineup for Boston. And this season, in line for the potentially the fifth Angel to pick up their first career victory. If Daniel Wright is able to hold on, the Angels will be able to hold on to this lead. 7 1 here in the eighth inning. 
Marlboro line out of Bull Durham. Uh, another new league record. Line to the center field, leadoff single for George Springer. One for four game. Valdez had himself a one, two, three, seventh, working his second inning of relief. That seldom happens. Reliever is going multiple innings for the Angels. Very quick economical inning last inning for Valdez. Threw the ball very, very well. There's Marvin Gonzalez started and left. Playing shortstop now. One for three so far with a bunt base hit. One hopper to Pennington. Should be two. Coward. Over to Joy. Double play. Two down. That ball got on Pennington so quickly. Had to wait for Caleb. Just a tick. It's another double play turn against the Astros for the Angels. Couple in this game. Colin Moran, third base, first plate appearance, and Valdez saw that uh, Paulino could spike a fastball at 98. Figured he'd kind of give it a shot. <laughs> One and zero. It's always very comfortable as a home plate umpire when you see that pitch coming at you in the dirt, where you're really very difficult to get out of the way. Fortunately enough, it did so. I've never understood how you could spike a fastball that far in front of home plate. I mean, what are you? I, I, the, I can't imagine the mindset of what you're trying to do with a fastball. Yeah, that that's you very hard. Bounce it that that's far very hard. It's usually it's going to be a changeup or a breaking ball. Right, I get Split that. Split finger fastball, maybe, but a fastball or, or a slide, you know, hard yeah, slider or yes. something. I get that. <laughs> fastball, four seamer. He's trying to make the hitter uncomfortable. I guess. <laughs> At that point, just hit the bull. Just fired up to the screen. Change the eye level. <laughs> <laughs> the old change in that eye level. And then you paint the inside corner yeah. like that. <laughs> Fairly easy two innings for Valdez. Angels still on top. Header kicks off on Fox at 1.30 Pacific with Oak Wall home up.
faces Kyle Hicks and the number 21 ranked TCU Horn Frog. Horn Frog. Frog. <laughs> Pacific. I was going to go with a nickname, but I better not. Arizona State takes on USC, and it's all streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Pretty sure there's going to be some points scored in that second. University of Oklahoma. Shane Robinson takes a strike. Robinson, Bandy, and Ortega. Paulino's third inning of relief had a 1, 2, 3, 7, including a couple of strikeouts. Shane pops this one up behind the plate. So Robinson pops out. One out. Here's Jet. Bandy one for three with a single. He's hit the ball pretty hard a couple times tonight. Bandy, big swing and a miss, one and one. Broken bat, little flare out to center field, and that is going to not fall in. Marisnik out of nowhere. Diving in from Riverside County. Yes, he How about did. about that play? Two down. Well, we've seen him make some unbelievable plays. He is fearless out in center field or any position he's played in the outfield. Look how far he's got to come in on this baseball. Full extension on the dive. What a play. And then unable, able to hold on to that baseball as he slams into that grass in the outfield. What a play by Marisnik. As well, you should. Great play by Marisnik. Ortega tonight a walk, a pop up, and a ground out. This one's out towards center field. This is a little bit easier. Back toward Riverside County. Makes a catch. A one, two, three inning. Marizic flashes the leather. Fine defensive center fielder. We will head to the ninth. Angels up seven to one. With a 7-1 lead here in the opening game of this three-game set, the final weekend of the regular season. 
Angels here in the ninth will have a new pitcher as Cody Eagy comes on to relief. Takes over for Jose Valdez, who worked two scoreless. Valdez with one hit. Two strikeouts in his two innings of work. Eagy come in and try to uh, finish this one off quickly. 13th game, a 1 0 mark. Third run at 7 2 thirds. White, Kemp, and Reed do up. Tyler White, a 219 average. Ground ball up the middle, leadoff single. Left fielder, number 16, That's a pull foul. First plate appearance for Tony Kemp, speedy outfielder, hitting 221. No balls, two strikes. Max Stassi has come out to the on deck circle so he would bat for A.J. Reed. Here's the 0 2. Upstairs, one ball, two strikes. A little over 30,000 in the house tonight. He was getting to uh, 3 million fans for the 14th straight season. Very impressive. Cal remains at one and two. Breaking ball got him. Kemp goes down swinging. One away. Good break of ball. Eagy on this one going down and away. It's a swing and miss. Stasi, so far 0 for 8. Two thirty average at Triple A. Down it in. Choi, of course, playing behind. Wide over at first base with a 7 1 lead here in the night. As Eagy gets ahead at 1 and 2. Cody had a little trouble finish things off in the ninth inning. What, Tuesday night? Well, indecision on his part. A little more aggressive, it seems like, tonight. Good life on all of his pitches so far. That's a good fastball away. Down goes Stasi. Back to back strikeouts for Eagy. Two down. He paints that outside corner, a little bit off the corner at 89. 
Another swing and miss. Halos one out away from taking the opening game of the series. Arnett is the right fielder. One for three, an RBI double back in the second. Two balls, no strikes. Mickey trying to finish this one off for Daniel Wright. His first major league win. Six solid innings, five strikeouts, no walks, one hit batter for Daniel. There's a 2 0. 2 of 1. Pretty consistent velocity for Iggy right here. 87, 88, 89. 2 1 foul back. It's two balls, two strikes. We started the show. We were talking about the Angels' season and the struggles they've had, the ups and downs, more downs than ups. With an opportunity to finish the season without getting to the 90 loss mark, this would do it for the Angels. He came in with the 72 and 87 mark. The two to play after this one. And it's down and in a full count. Small little moral victory, if you will. Also, what a special moment this could potentially be for Daniel Wright be able to pick up his first major league win. Some big games for Cowart. Clear the bases with a double. Stole home. Marte with a home run. Simba with a two RBI single. There's a payoff pitch. And that is down and in. He walked him. So a two out walk puts two men on. It's Jason Castro coming to the plate. He's gone the distance for the Strohs. A one for three game. A one breaking ball. Hey. Down it away. Is one you might want to try to paint that fastball on the outside part of the plate. Keep it down. Plus the defense behind you. That's in there for a strike. Exactly where you want to throw that. Here's the 2 2. Called strike three. Light that baby up as the Angels take the opener against the Houston Astros by the final of 7 1. And he could be able to strike out the side, but congratulations to Daniel Wright picking up his first Major League W tonight. Six really good innings pitched by Wright. Which is similar to a couple RBI single. Marte with a home run. Bases clearing double. Caleb Cowart stole home. Angels continue to play well here down the stretch. Win this one 7-1, but the big story has to be Daniel Wright picking up that first W.
Oh, there's no doubt. A solid performance for him. Back to back outings in which he worked six innings. Tonight had five strikeouts with no walks. Picked up that first W. You mentioned the uh, nice performance by the Angels offense once again. A four run second inning. It all started with the error in right field. The Angels took advantage of it. Played it four runs. Marte added a run with his home run in the third and added two more in the fifth to take the opener of this weekend series. The final weekend of the 2015 16 season, pardon me. By the final of seven to one, a good victory overall. Now it's one four straight. And there's the man of the hour mark his way out to Alex Curry, Daniel Wright, yeah, picking up down. his first victory. Yeah, let's go down, Alex. Now, Daniel, congratulations on your first big league win. What are the emotions like to finally have this moment? Uh, you know, it's something you kind of think about as a little kid, and uh, when it finally happens, it uh, hasn't really sank in yet, but I'm sure it will tonight. You had six solid innings tonight. What has been the biggest improvement for you since being with this team? I think just getting a little more more comfortable. Um, going out there, putting myself in good counts. Uh, not not really trying to overdo stuff and go out there and pitch my game. Now, final start of the season. Are you happy with what you've been able to accomplish and what you've showcased to this team? Yeah, it's always good to go out kind of showing your best stuff. And um, it's it's been fun. This great group of guys in the clubhouse and it's been very easy transition uh, since I've been over here. Congratulations on getting that first big league win. Huge accomplishment tonight. Thank you. Well, there you have it. The Angels make it four straight wins here at home. And give the fans a lot to cheer about tonight. Stick around for Angels Live with Patrick O'Neill and Jose Moda next.